Senate will come to order. All right, looks like we're here. Senators and guests, please rise and give prayerful attention to our chaplain. <laughs> we need prayer. <laughs> please join with me. Lord, we need we need you to talk to us. Too often, we're just talking to ourselves, searching for answers, but not even knowing what the questions are. We need you to talk to us, that we might have the wisdom to address the issues of today. We need you to give us those Isaiah moments Beginning in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 8, you declare distress and misery upon your people because they ignored your words. And in verse 20, like it is today, they had it so twisted that things you call evil, they were calling good, and things you call good, they were calling evil. What they needed and what you gave Isaiah in chapter 6, verses 1 through 9, was that moment of clarity. You opened his eyes, his ears, and his mouth. He saw how wasted and ruined he was. His ears were opened to hear from you. and You opened his mouth to speak for you. When he surrendered, saying, here I am, send me. He was ready for you to use him, and you used him as a major spokesman in the Old Testament. So, Lord, bring us to the level of humility where our eyes will see clearly and not cloudy. Our ears will hear your voice above all others, and our mouths will be yours to speak your truths. I present this prayer in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. of the United States of America to the republic for which stands one nation under God, indivisible, it's my pleasure to introduce Honorable Marla Lukert, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, who will be administering our oath today. Will Majority Leader Alley please escort Tim Schallenberger to the front of the chamber? Congratulations, Senator Schallenberger. Welcome, welcome to this side of the hall. Clerk will now call the roll. Allie. Here. Baumgartner. Here. Billinger. Here. Lazy. Here. Bowers. Here. Clays. Corson. Dietrich. Here. Dahl. Here. 
Erickson, Bag, Faust Goudeau, Francisco, Gossage, Haley, Holland, Holscher, Kirschen, Kluse, Longbine, Masterson, McGinn, Olson, O'Shea, Peck, Peterson, Petty, Pittman, Pyle, Reddy, Reichman, Schallenberger, Stefan, Straub, Sykes, Thompson, Tyson, Ware, Warren, Wilborn. Chamber, I thought I was going to introduce one former senator, but now I see a second one back there. So I see on our north wall, we have former Senator Ruth Teichman, the president of the chamber. And we also have uh, now congressman and former colleague, uh, Jake LaTurner. Kind of feel like I need to say, did I miss anybody? Do I have any other former? <laughs> All right, we'll move on. Introduction of original motions and Senate resolutions. Clerk will read. Senate resolution number 1704 by Senator Francisco, a resolution honoring the outstanding achievements of Robert Robbie Eugene Steinhardt. Chair recognize the Senator from Douglas, Senator Francisco. Thank you, Mr. President. Would the reader please read? Whereas Robert Eugene Steinhardt, better known to the world as Robbie Steinhardt, was one of the original founding members of the rock band Kansas, along with his bandmates Phil E. Hart of Coffeeville, Carrie Livgren of Topeka, Dave Hope of Topeka, Richard Williams of Topeka, and Steve Walsh of St. Louis, Missouri. And whereas Robbie's career with the band Kansas spanned the years of 1973 through 1982 and 1997 through 2006. Well known for his wild hair and bold violin style, he was the band's frontman violinist and co-lead singer. And whereas Robbie, born in Chicago, Illinois, was given up for adoption at birth, Milton and Eel Steinhardt adopted him when he was four days old. And whereas they moved to Lawrence, Kansas, when Dr. Milton Steinhardt secured the position as professor and chairman of the music history department at the University of Kansas. And whereas Robbie was raised in Lawrence, where he attended Lawrence High School, graduating in 1968. At Lawrence High School, he was in a band and first chair in the orchestra. He also attended the University of Kansas, a proud Jayhawk, until his career started with the band Kansas. And whereas, Robbie came from a musical family. His mother was a pianist, but his father who bestowed upon him the love for the violin and music as a whole. And whereas, Dr. Milton Steinhardt was honored with two Fulbright grants and two Guggenheim fellowships, which took his family across the world to learn and explore the history of music, mostly in the city of music, Vienna, Austria. And whereas, classically trained at the American International School of Vienna, Robbie brought sorry, his knowledge and training of the violin into the world of rock and roll, thus blazing a new trail for the violin's role in popular music. And whereas, during Robbie's hiatus from the band Kansas, he formed a band called Steinhardt Moon in the Tampa Bay area of Florida with his best friend of 45 years, Rick Moon. And whereas, playing original songs co-written by Moon and Robbie, they played throughout the state of Florida until Robbie's return to the band Kansas. And whereas, before his death in 2021, Robbie, along with producer Michael Franklin and co-writer Timothy Franklin of Solar Studios, created its first solo album, Not in Kansas Anymore, which received worldwide recognition. <coughs> and whereas, above all things, Robbie was proud to have been the father of Rebecca M. Steinhardt and to have married the love of his life, Cindy Cynthia Steinhardt, from 2006 until his death in 2021. And whereas, Rebecca and Cynthia will continue to honor Robbie's life and achievements with the Robbie Starnhart Foundation, with the mission to further music education and performing arts in his name. And whereas, Robbie departed this earthly life on June, sorry, July 17, 2021, at the age of 71. But his outgoing personality, love for family and friends, and dedication to music and public good will continue to resonate across the straight state and our nation for many years to come. And whereas, Robbie is laid to rest next to his parents at Pioneer Cemetery in his hometown of Lawrence. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate of the state of Kansas that we honor the outstanding achievements of Robert Robbie Eugene Steinhardt, and be it further resolved that the Senate expresses its most profound sense of sorrow and offers its sincerest condolences to the family and friends of Robert Eugene Steinhardt, 
on this time of his passing, and be it further resolved that when the Senate adjourns on this day, it does so in loving memory and in honor of Robert Eugene Steinhardt. Senator from Douglas. Thank you, Mr. President. This is truly an honor for me, especially because we have some very special guests um, with us here in the Senate um, that I'd like to introduce. First, and if they could stand when I call their name, Cindy Steinhardt. Cindy was, Cindy was the wife and now widow um, of Robbie. She was also often the photographer of the band, so very glad that she could be here. Becky Steinhardt is Robbie's daughter, um, and she's an artist. Um, herself, so we're glad for you to be here. Many of you might recognize uh, the name Carrie Livgren. He's here, along with his wife, Vicki Livgren. Um, Carrie was a member of many bands, um, but a founding member of the band Kansas. Um, he was honored in the house in 2006, so it's about time we had him over um, on this side. Um, he was a graduate of Topeka West High School. Harry wrote many of the lyrics for the band. Harry on Wayward Son. <laughs> Some other people who are here with us. Carl Arnett, a longtime friend, starting back in high school um, when he was the friend with Robbie. And um, also... Rochelle Raising um, Patterson, um, Carl's sweetheart. Um, we have with us um, Glenn Carstinos, who is also a friend of the family and the executive director of the Bobby Steinhardt Foundation. Patrick Zollner is here, the um, acting executive director of the Kansas Historical Society. So I'm assuming this will be listed as a historical event. And with him is Sarah Bell, the Education and Museum Division Director. I'm also pleased that Senator Holland, um, I thought would be with us. Um, but uh, we have representatives Mike Amix and Dennis Boog Heiberger who helped me represent Lawrence um, in the Kansas legislatures. So um, the Robbie Steinhardt Foundation was a sponsor of Ovation, the USD 497 talent show that was held at the Lead Center for Performing Arts last night. Cindy, Becky, and Glenn um, were at that performance with me. Mr. President, it may be true that we um, are all dust in the wind. But this Kansas dust seems very special. I would ask all in the chamber to join in a warm welcome, along with condolences to these special guests. Mr. President, I move an emergency be declared, the rules suspended, and Senate Resolution 1704 be adopted by voice vote. You've heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. And we're honored to have you guys here. She took all my song title jokes, so um, I'm just going to say you guys redefined Kansas Day for us, so we're honored to have you here, and our condolences as well. Introduction of bills and concurrent resolutions. Clerk will read. Senate Bill Number 77, by Committee on Federal and State Affairs, an act concerning housing discrimination. Senate Bill Number 78, by Committee on Utilities, an act concerning electric utilities. Senate Bill Number 79, by Committee on Assessment and Taxation, an act concerning taxation. Senate Bill Number 80, by Committee on Assessment and Taxation, an act concerning taxation. 
Senate Bill Number 81 by Committee on Assessment and Taxation, an act concerning income taxation. Senate Bill Number 82 by Committee on Education, an act concerning education. Senate Bill Number 83 by Committee on Education, an act concerning education. Senate Bill Number 84 by Committee on Education, an act concerning education. Senate Bill Number 85 by Committee on Financial Institutions and Insurance, an act concerning travel insurance. Senate Bill Number 86 by Committee on Local Government, an act concerning governmental ethics. This constitutes introduction of Senate Bill 77 through Senate Bill 86. Clerk will read. Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 1602 by Senators Kirshen and others. A concurrent resolution disapproving of the designation of the lesser prairie chicken as a threatened species in Kansas by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service and supporting efforts to remove such designation. The chair recognizes the senator from Sedgwick, Senator Kirshen. Thank you, Mr. President. Would the reader please read the resolution? Whereas, on November 17, 2022, the United States Fish and Wildlife Service listed the lesser prairie chicken as threatened under the Endangered Species Act, and whereas, this designation creates unnecessary obstacles for Kansas farmers, ranchers, and energy producers who wish to manage their own land, and whereas, the designation of the lesser prairie chicken as threatened is detrimental to Kansas agriculture and energy industries, and whereas, on December 21st, 2022, Senators Roger Marshall and Jerry Moran co-sponsored the Senate Joint Resolution 70, a Congressional Review Act resolution stating congressional disapproval of the designation of the lesser prairie chicken as threatened. And whereas, Representatives Ron Estes, Jake LeTurner, and Tracy Mann co-sponsored House Joint Resolution 105, addressing the same issue in the House of Representatives. And whereas, if the resolutions pass, their passage would prevent the designation from going into effect. And whereas, the resolutions would affirm the rights of farmers, ranchers, and energy producers to control their lands and continue their existing proactive measures to prevent the lesser prairie chicken. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate of the State of Kansas, the House of Representatives concurring therein, that we disapprove of the designation of the lesser prairie chicken as a threatened species in Kansas by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. And be it further resolved that we support the passage of Joint Resolution 70 and House Resolution 105, which will return control to the farmers, ranchers, and energy producers of Kansas. Senator from Sedgwick, Senator Kirshen. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to start, begin by saying thank you to all those who supporters of this resolution to bring that, help bring it about that it would be changed. We had uh, uh, a lot of folks that, and we also got our congressional delegation and our United States Senators Marshall and Moran who've asked for it to be delayed in order for it to, for farmers and ranchers to have a chance to protect themselves. One of the main key items is that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service from 2012 to 2022, those fo folks were keeping an eye on the populations and they came up with an average number of 32,210 population in this area. And that was that, that that covers five states, and what has happened now that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services has went into the area and examined it and and taken certain acreage of that and called it threatened. That's a ranking on the list to see how much severe something's going to be going on. And the rest, other part of the the land was in was classified as endangered. So those are serious accusations and serious recovery that has to be taken place. And so we appreciate uh, the ideas that Senator Moran, they said they will extend, ask for an extension so that we have more time to defend our case. So um, with that, well, I'll stand for questions. Any questions for the Senator from Cedric on the resolution? Comments? Senator from Douglas, Senator Francisco. Um, thank you, um, Mr. President. Um, I was pleased that the Senator shared this with members of the Agriculture Committee. Um, so I don't have any um, questions at this time, but I do know that many farmers, ranchers, and energy producers have worked to provide appropriate habitat for the lesser prairie chicken. Um, on the other hand, I believe that control must be balanced and um, believe we need to make um, some more significant steps so I cannot join in on this resolution. Thank you. Further question or comments on the resolution? Seeing none, Senator, do you make the motion? Thank you, Mr. President. 
I move an emergency be declared the rule suspended in SCR 1602 be adopted by voice vote. For the motion, all in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Please note reference the bills on page one of the calendar. Points of personal privilege. The chair recognizes the senator from Mead, Senator Reichman. Thank you, Mr. President. I am honored today to have in the gallery here today uh, Leon and Ethel Reimer. Uh, would you like to stand? They've only traveled 300 miles one way to get here. They're from me. Uh, Leon, if you know him, he's the one there on the right. He's a county appraiser, and I had him speak in my class many times. And uh, to his right is Ethel uh, Reimer, and she still is teaching, and she's taught for 40 years and going, and, uh, which is the best profession you can have. And thank you for coming, and let's give him a hand. Welcome to the Kansas Senate. Second point of personal privilege, Chair recognizes the Senator from Cherokee, Senator Schallenberger. That's what I want to talk about, Mr. President. <clears throat> I have two things that I want to say. First of all, I want to thank the people at, in Cherokee, Crawford, and Bourbon County for electing me to replace Senator Hildebrand. Uh, Senator Hildebrand, we helped uh, get him up here a few years back, and he was a wonderful senator for us. And uh, we know how difficult it is for people of working age to, <clears throat> to conduct their business and to uh, stay home and have to come up here. And so uh, we thank him for his efforts, and I appreciate those who helped me come up here. The second thing I want to do is I want to apologize in advance for the faux pas that I'm about to do because I come from the House, and it was a long time ago that I came from the House. And when I was in the House, it was Karen Tyson. It wasn't the senator from Malin, who I share a county with, or it was Virgil Peck. It wasn't the senator from Montgomery that I share a county with. So when I do that, please don't gavel me down. And I know I'm supposed to speak to the president or the vice president, but in the House, as you know, and some of you are from the House, you just argue with each other. So I get, <clears throat> I get a call a few weeks ago, and when you, when you win a special election like this, you really don't have much time. Uh, I was in my sweatsuit eating potato chips watching Leave it to Beaver. It was exactly what I was doing, and this guy that I'll call Deep Throat calls me, and he says, did you ever think of being in the Senate? And I said, oh, I've thought about that several times, <clears throat> but I'm not interested. And he said, well, Hildebrand is going to quit. And I said, well, I haven't heard that. Said, well, he, trust me, he's going to quit. And you, you should think about it. I said, well, I'll think about that. That might be interesting. And so three weeks from, that was three weeks ago, like now. And here we are. And so it's been quite an interesting three weeks for me. Um, but we've arrived in the Senate. And I know that it's a wonderful day for me in Kansas. <clears throat> because when I got in the car last night, uh, the senator from Miami was there, <clears throat> and she heard me give every delegate my cell phone number. And I said, I'm going to give you my cell phone number, and if you call me, I probably won't answer, but I'll at least know you who you are, and I'll call you back. Remember me saying that? So I get in the car this morning, come up here, and the phone rings. I thought, here we go. And sure enough, I answered the phone, and it's a, I couldn't quite understand it, but I had one publisher's clearinghouse. And all they needed was my bank routing information. I gave them that. So sooner, very soon, I'm sure, I will, I will be getting that check. And the second call, this is the second call I got this morning, was that it was my privileged day to get a real good discount on my car warranty. And so those were my first two calls today. The third call was from my wife, and I knew that one because she's on my phone. And I won't keep you long, but I know you've got nothing to do. I've looked at the agenda. <laughs> and you've got to earn your $88, which is the same it was years ago, so I don't know what you're doing about that. Um, but I, the third one was with my wife, and she said, what exactly is the difference from the House and the Senate? 
Well, it's kind of hard to explain, but we do a lot of cruises. Me and my family do a lot of, my wife do a lot of cruises. I said, so it's kind of like the Senate is kind of like the Queen Mary. And the House is kind of like Carnival Mardi Gras. And they both are fun, and they both get the job done. It's just how you, how you travel. It's a privilege for me to be here. And those of you way over there in the minority party uh, may have heard of me, and some of you in the majority party may have heard of me. I was one time Speaker of the House in the legislature, state treasurer, I worked for Brownback. So the, so the most recent people remember me from my Brownback days. And then there are some of you who may remember me as Speaker of the House, and there are very few, very few, and nobody, as I look around this particular body, that remembers me when I was a freshman legislator. I'm a freshman again. So any misconceptions you may have about me, you're about to find out, may not be true. Uh, I was a rebel. I voted no a lot. And I always did what I thought was in the best interest of my district, not of my party or leadership. Now, I'm sure that in this case, those are all the same thing. I'm proud to be here. I'm proud to be a Kansas senator. And I want to tell you one other thing. When you leave here, and you all someday will leave here, it's in your head. You dream about it. You think about it. It's in your head. So make those days that we all have here ones that when you think about are good. Thank you very much, Mr. President. We are glad to have you, Tim, and I can assure you those are all the same. So, and by the way, I think a third of this body is house trained. So it does, there is a difference. The only difference you'll really notice is that you got a microphone right at your desk. <laughs> we're, we're glad to have you, thrilled to have you. All right, back to business. Please see the Secretary of the Senate to receive guest tickets to the State of the State. Are there announcements? Being none, Chair recognizes the Majority Leader from Cali, Senator Alley. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate adjourn until 2.30 p.m. on Tuesday, January 24th, 2023. You've heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Senate's adjourned. <laughs>